another good dusting of snow on its way. Originally, it was supposed to snow for like an hour or so this morning. And then I checked the weather and now they're calling for another possibly 15 centimeters today. <laughs> tire pressure out of this thing and really give that climb at the commons another really good try. how much effort the city has actually put into clearing these paths. It wasn't like this last year. All the paths were just covered. It ended up being a treacherous thing to be on, but they're on top of it this year. Although to the pessimistic credit, this has been the first like real snowfall we've had, so. <laughs> Much dry, sorta. So, there's a couple different things on the schedule for today. Two of which are relatively notable. Number one is Brent's bike. A few weeks ago, Brent had come in after I had done a full detail on another steel rally bike and immediately started asking questions along the lines of how do I get my bike that clean and have that kind of finish? Well, unbeknownst to him, I had also treated the inside of the frame to prevent rust. So after I gave him the full rundown on everything that I did to that rally, he basically decided that once his commuter was back on the road, because it wasn't at the time, that this thing would be coming in for the exact same treatment and I don't necessarily blame him. It's somewhat hateful work. Detailing things in general can be very time consuming and just meticulous. I kind of enjoy doing that type of stuff. Um, I only really like doing it to bikes that I find like deserve it. Uh, the Tricross, for example, not a bike that super deserves it. But this thing being Reynolds 631, I've ridden Tamlands before. It's a beautiful feeling bike. It makes sense to me that, uh, that we give it the full fledged treatment. Um, I'm running out of time today to do it, but I can start it by getting rid of all this like dirt and whatnot by just spraying some of the cleaner that I have here, let it do a good amount of the work. And then tomorrow I'll come in and really finish everything up, give it a nice finish on the outside by using some of the Pedro's bike lust and make sure that I get some rust check, rust prevention inside the frame everywhere it can be so that the bike can be ridden in all weather conditions and never ever have any problems. Oh cool, this looks good. Now typically at this step when I'm just getting started I'll let that sit on there a little bit to lift up the dirt and get it off of there. Um, for in here at the shop, I'll use one of these brushes to kind of get everything off, agitate it off. Uh, at home, I much, much prefer using a hose and a sponge. So on here, right now, what you see dripping off it, all this foamy stuff, this is just the WD-40 bike wash. Um, the stuff I was using before is a relatively harsh degreaser. I did what I could to like scrub everything off and then wipe it off, but I tend to like to use something a little less harsh from any brand 
uh, as like a bike cleaner to try and get rid of any really harsh degreaser. Purely for my own sanity, I don't know if it really makes a difference or not, but, but in my mind, for the polish that I want to put on it, I prefer that there's not any harsh degreaser anywhere in sight so that the polish can actually do its job instead of get washed away by a degreaser that's already on there. So that's kind of my thought in that process. So right now I'm just gonna wipe off the rest of that WD-40 bike wash, um, and then I'm probably just gonna let that sit here under the heater for the night so that I can come back to it very, very dry and ready to go tomorrow morning. And then we'll jump to the next thing. All right, so that'll sit under the heater that's behind me right there for the entire night. I'll come back, it'll be plenty, plenty dry. But because I'm sort of running out of time that I actually wanna put into this video, um, this next part, this next part will be totally and completely done based on all of the votes that we decided in the comments of the, the cheap cassette video uh, about which bike to make a single speed. Well, the winner, the winner ended up being this one. Obviously, it was going to be this one. A little So if you recall back to the cheap cassette video, uh, you'll know that I was also sent this single speed chain tensioner from Banggood. And uh, they also wanted me to kind of like feature this in, in the video because they did send it to me for free. Um, so it's a, uh, it's a, well, they call it a bikeite chain tensioner, uh, but the packaging says it's a light pro bike product. I did sort of look at it a little bit and I'm wondering if I'm wondering if something's sort of missing like here huh okay well that gives you an idea how that goes together there's the spring and there's the spot where it kind of goes together. They live together this way. Uh, I can't help but wonder if this is supposed to come apart or not. There is something missing. I think that this, I think that this will go just into the derailleur hanger. That's what I'm gonna try anyway. So I'm sort of thinking that something's missing in this, but I still think I can make it work. So let me give you a rundown on how I'm going to do this without spending any extra money whatsoever. This derailleur is obviously going to come off. One of these chain rings is obviously going to come off. This front derailleur is going to come off and I'll take the cables out, but I will not be disassembling the shifters. The real secret to this is that I'm going to reuse the chain. So yes, this chain is totally messed up, but I don't really care. All I'm going to do is reuse a cog out of a cassette. I'll put two spacers on either side like you would with any single speed conversion and then hopefully, hopefully this thing holds everything together. I might even just go super haggard and just cut the cables at the bar tape. Maybe. Just as an FYI to those of you watching, I dropped these about 17 times while shooting that scene. I am no mechanic superhero. So this is a 332nd chain ring. It's for 10 or 11 speed, but I find that there's, uh, for these particular chain rings, there's not a whole lot of ramping going on, so it actually makes for a decent enough candidate for a single speed setup. And that's why I'm using it. All right. 
something definitely was missing from this. The, the most important part, you know, the installation bolt. Thankfully, I work in a bike shop, so I was able to scrounge one up out of our scrap bin. But uh, purely based on that alone, I don't necessarily know that I could uh, recommend a product that is missing parts. So I guess we'll still see how this works. Although, you know, don't buy it. Now, uh, now I get that I put this on backwards, but uh, after looking at it for a little bit, I just kind of realized that it seems to fit better this way. Just sort of weird. So as has been tradition with most of the last few vlogs, I guess we'll go through another montage of how the monster truck tri-cross with no paint on it looks again. The best way to know if this is going to work or not is to go ride it home. And it has been snowing all day. Now I'll be honest, now I'll be honest, I'm very much expecting issues with this tonight on the ride home. Um, it, it doesn't seem like it wants to hold a very great amount of tension. Well, it does right now. But in the stand, the chain did drop. Maybe that won't happen. I'll give you the full rundown when I get home, but right now, I don't think that this, uh, that this single speed chain tensioner is really worth your money. Uh, and if you're going to grab one, instead of grabbing this one, I'll link it below anyway, I would maybe, I would maybe instead grab something from the brands that I'll, I'll link below at the like Amazon links. All right, big tires, low pressure, cantilever brakes, single speed. If this doesn't make me internet famous, I just, I don't know what will. I'm seriously enjoying the fact that it wasn't supposed to snow, like, at all today, and it was supposed to rain. And we ended up with a snowstorm. <laughs> So far, so good. It's starting to turn from snow to just freezing rain at this point. Hardly as fun. <laughs> Sit. Thank you. So, okay. The tensioner did its job. It never dropped the chain on the way home. Didn't make any absurd noises. It wasn't annoying in any way. But, uh, but I kind of chalked that down to the fact that I had to, like, make it work on the install. When I, when I actually tried to install it the proper way, it just didn't fit. It didn't work. So the backwards way that I did it ended up working better. Uh, the hardware that was missing, and honestly, I think the design is significantly more complicated than it needs to be. It doesn't need to have a pivot arm and then another pivot. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, so yeah, while it does work, it didn't drop the chain. It wasn't noisy. It didn't get bothered by the, the mounds and mounds of snow that built up on it. Uh, I just, I don't know. I don't think that that's as worth it to even look at. <sighs> okay, uh, I'm going to end this because the next little bit of my night involves gorging down on a burrito and then shoveling a slightly snowy driveway. Bye.